Good evening. We are in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Um, I, uh, for the first time uh, in the history of this ride, which is uh, three years now, um, did not finish um, the stage today because I, um, I've been sick and uh, I've been able to ride through um, the, whatever is going through my body. I don't know whether it's a cold or what. Uh, but when I woke up this morning, it was, it was in my lungs, and I've been coughing and hacking, and, um, you know, I can kind of ride through it when it's just my body feeling like crap, but, um, not being able to breathe is kind of a problem when you're riding a bike, um, you know, the way we do out here, and so, uh, uh, as you might be able to tell, it's kind of hard for me to except that I that I didn't finish today's stage and, and uh, you know Joanne said to me uh, when I called her uh, this this afternoon to let her know that I didn't finish she said you know you're human and uh, since we started this ride in 2009 I um, I've been out here trying to reconnect with myself as a human being but I haven't really connected that to that simple statement that I'm human and, and uh, I, have to really, I have to really look at that and uh, consider that. Um, I, I've been out here trying to find my son and uh, it's really hard for me to accept that um, I had to get into a car today and uh, So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep searching around Joanne's statement that I'm human, and I'm gonna try and understand that. Um, tonight uh, we're dedicating our resting hours to a young man who passed away this year, um, who was a cyclist himself. Um, he was 18 years old. He passed away in August. He was diagnosed with a very, very rare brain tumor um, in 2010. It was rare that it was found in a child. Uh, in his case, he was 17. He may have been 16. I don't have the exact date of diagnosis. Uh, it's rare that it was found in, in a teenager or a child. It's actually the same form of glioblastoma that Senator Ted Kennedy um, had. So it's commonly found in adults. And um, this uh, young man's name was, was Joey. And uh, his mom told us that um, he broke down crying when he realized that he could no longer ride his bike. And uh, There's just an incredible amount of stuff going on in my brain right now when I think about Joey facing the fact that something was going on in his body that was beyond his control and, and, and it was causing him to not be able to ride his bike and, uh, and for me in a completely different way today, um, just realizing that, like, something didn't feel right in my body, uh, like my blood, my blood didn't feel like it had enough octane in it, and, uh, I just, I just couldn't do it anymore, and, uh, I have so much pride about coming out here and riding my bike, um, Joey, I'm gonna tell you his full name, Joey Aaron Janel, um, from Valley Glen, California. Uh, Joey uh, was facing a completely different uh, uh, reality when he realized he couldn't ride his bike and I um, I just um, I uh, I'm really taken by by his story and I'm really taken by um, power.
power of a bicycle um, in his life, the power of a bicycle in my life and in, and in our lives, and um, what it means. It means freedom. It means independence. It means you know you're you're, you're taking big swipes at self mastery. You're you're literally going on this perfectly balanced machine, um, which requires perfect balance to ride. And you're and you're going out there and you're figuring out what you're made of. And for Joey to face, I can only imagine, the day that, that where he could no longer ride his bike, that freedom and that self mastery and that that ability to just go out in the wind and fly, whether it was coming at his face or, or, or coming up from the back. Um, I'm really, I'm really, um, I'm just blown away that this is tonight's dedication. Um, you know, I, I um, Megan uh, at Pablo of HQ uh, prepares all these and, and spends months and months and months working with with people to to with parents to get these dedications together and and lo and behold this this dedication comes up tonight where there's such incredible symmetry between um, our friend Joey and, and our ride today um, I'm humbled by this um, tomorrow I may not get on the bike tomorrow I may have to sit in the car again because if I keep pushing, it's only going to prolong my sickness. Um, and I have to face that. I have to face the fact that if I'm going to keep chipping away at the Pavlov Foundation's mission, as I do um, with, my, with my friends out here uh, who join this ride, I have to like, keep my body in good working order. Um, I'm lucky that I've never gotten sick until now. And um, I need to... I need to accept, and so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit here with Joey's story tonight, and I'm going to uh, read these words again that Megan has prepared, and I'm going to uh, try and find some comfort in what this 18-year-old man uh, went through when he got to look at his bike and realize he was never going to ride it again. Um, I may not be able to ride my bike tomorrow. Uh, on the whole, um, I'll be able to get on it the next day and keep uh, and keep swinging, and I'm and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to honor the commitment I've made to everybody who's donated a penny, a dollar, a hundred dollars, whatever, and um, most of all, we're going to keep Joey in our hearts tonight. We're going to keep in our hearts tonight all of the children, um, young adults in this case, who have passed away at the hands of of pediatric cancer. And we are going to keep raising money on this ride so that we can keep funding more and more and more um, research and more and more and more child life activities, those things that allow kids with cancer to still be kids. So uh, from Louisville, Kentucky, um, it's the night of day 10, Pablo Across America 2011. I wish you a good night and I thank you for your support.